Hi everyone, I'll be going over the actions and strategies of the restoration plan that I have been working on. And so again, the working title is still as similar as what it was. I haven't quite pared it down to anything better. The use of beavers and the restoration of degraded riparian areas. And we'll go back over the vision statement, see if there's any changes that have been made, the management alternatives, and the success criteria. The vision statement is also still the same right now, restoring nature by applying nature. And I feel like that still covers restoration, but also considering that there might be other alternatives that we will discuss in this presentation. Alternative one is just adding a beaver. Uh, it's the simplest alternative in a lot of ways and has a lot of pros, but also cons. It allows for a safe place to place nuisance beaver and could be in conjunction with a relocation program. It's the best restoration results uh, by far, and it creates new habitat for many species, which also includes restoring diversity, improves water quality and sediment buildup. It's generally low maintenance. Uh, for the most part, you just put a beaver in it and the beaver gets to work. So in that sense, it's relatively low maintenance. It's also all natural. Cons include um, the fact that beaver could ab abandon a new location uh, which puts you right back at square one. Um, their damning results could be in places we don't want. Uh, we don't necessarily, we can encourage them in certain areas or try to get them to dam in certain spots, but it could be in fact that they just ignore all of it and do what they want. And also the location needs to actually be beaver habitat. It has to have suitable foraging species available or else the beaver, beaver will not stay. And also once it's started, we, as people cannot manipulate the dam locations or the impacts as easily because at that point it's a wildlife habitat and it's going to be well established. And also nature does what it wants so no matter how much we try to predict it or guess what's going to happen it could just completely go sideways. Alternative two is using beaver dam analogs um, which as a pro doesn't require beaver. It comes with similar results and it does encourage beavers to return in some cases because you're essentially building better habitat and they come back on their own. BD locations um, are also based on the best available information. So it could be a perfectly precise location that we want um, these areas to be, which gives us more control for things like flooding or impacts to surrounding areas. It's a lot easier to adjust seeing as it's man-made, we can adjust it ourselves. And in a lot of aspects it's less likely to upset neighbors or surrounding areas because it's um, seen as something that's controllable as opposed to beavers which have a bad rep. And some cons, it definitely requires a lot of machines and manual labor and also the results aren't always quite as good as the real thing and also as a con it could encourage beaver to return so if you're bringing them you know, you're encouraging beaver to return to an area that might not necessarily be great for them to be there. That could be a con. And also, even with all of our science and data and maps and aerial photos and all that type of stuff, we might not have the most ideal location. A beaver might have an even better place to build a dam that would make restoration maybe even better. And also, there's maintenance required as well as long-term costs and management associated with this. since. Since a small creature is not doing the work for us, we have to do all of it. And we also have to make sure that if something didn't work or worked too well, that we, ha we adjust for that. And also it's more difficult for us to reach certain upstream areas, especially if you go way out more in wilderness type habitat or areas that are just farther out. Um, it could require expensive equipment like helicopters or lots of labor, things like that. Alternative three is just straight human restoration. Um, this is relatively common. Um, doesn't necessarily require much damming and it doesn't require a beaver. Uh, pros is that it doesn't require beaver cooperation. So you're not trying to, I guess, essentially negotiate with a small mammal. And it also allows us to have precise placement of materials, things like large woody debris or plantings. Uh, it can be exactly how we want, when we want, what type of plants we want. 
and with that you can also tailor the restoration to specific species. It's something that is seen here quite often up in the Pacific Northwest, tailoring restoration projects to improving fish habitat for native and migratory fish species. And it's also easier to adjust since we're the ones who are completely designing it and moving earth and rock to how we want it to be. And it's a lot of times less likely to upset neighbors. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, wetland restoration is seen as like a feel-good action, so it usually gets very relatively positive um, results um, when dealing with the community. However, there are cons. Uh, it doesn't necessarily yield as magnificent results or as drastic results as you see when a beaver is introduced. And there's also always room for human error, whether it's not planting willow stakes deep enough or um, moving a channel and it ends up that the hydrology doesn't work so it dries up or trying to create a wetland and it isn't able to sustain moisture. Anything like that could be a result of human error and it might not necessarily restore diversity as much as we want, at least maybe not at the beginning. And the survival rates could be unknown for plantings, which could push back a timeline. It also requires a lot of um, disturbance of the soil, which lends itself to having um, invasive species um, pop up when you least want them to. And also a lot of times it's with wetland restoration, you're not damming. So there's not water storage, there's less or no sediment backup and buildup, and so which um, defeats some of the more beneficial aspects of damming. And it also requires a much higher cost, lots of manual labor, machines, time, and then you have that continual monitoring and adjustment and management. And finally, you always have to consider no action or no alternative, at least where I work, you always have to have it in there as an option. And in a general sense, if you do nothing, it costs nothing, at least on a project scale, and it requires no labor or maintenance. Um, but also, depending on where it's at, if it ends up being, it could cause issues in the future. It could, could cause further erosion, incision of a channel. It could require re restoration later, but it'll be even more expensive or more costly or take more time because it's even more degraded. And in the long run, it doesn't improve wetland areas at all. And that's the whole point of this is uh, wetland restoration. So to gauge whether or not these methods or this plan is successful. Um, I've listed out some criteria and how you could measure those. So one of the things we talked about earlier um, at the beginning of the plan was that this could improve water quality, which you would basically do um, testing with, water quality testing, using something like a hydro lab or any of the, you know, getting water samples, so on and so forth. Um, Success would also mean increased plant richness and diversity. You could do that through field surveys where you literally go out and can't count the species, or you could use something like airborne LIDAR, which has been really helpful uh, to estimate that. And then also a success would be return and increase in fish and wildlife species. And again, that could be a field survey. You could do that through aerial photography, um, those type of Measurements would let you know what is or is not there, what has returned, how much, so on and so forth. And also another thing we're looking for is improved channel complexity. And that's usually one of the easiest things to find out just simply through aerial photography and then also just a general field survey. It's a very visual thing that you can see. And then overall, you know, success would be measured by, is the wetland restored? You know, did you see this area that was just a stream with dry riverbeds? And is it now a wetland area? And an, easy way to measure that would just be to do a wetland or, or an aquatic resources delineation, see visuals, take pictures, maybe test the soil hydrology, things like that. But that's kind of what you're looking for. You know, if you see these pictures over here, you see the, the changes over the years before and after beaver introduction. And that's, that's what you're looking for to see if it's successful. So as per usual, as the end, the main goal is to restore wetlands by just adding beavers. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me and have a great day.